Well, I finally managed to corner the market on American padlocks. And guys, I kind of run into a problem here. Uh, I ended up buying, and this is purely by accident, I never expected to win these eBay auctions, but uh, the first batch I bought was this one. And these are older American model 50, series 5200. These are all steel body locks, pretty good locks. And I've, in fact, I've started, already stripped them and I'm starting to rebuild them. And the reason I was able to strip them, these, by the way, were made in April of 1988. Because when you strip them, we all know it's pretty easy. All you do, you remove the screw, everything pops out the bottom, and you have access to your core. Pretty easy stuff. Well, over time, I've noticed that there are some padlocks that are a little bit different. For example, these three here in front of me in the last, I guess, year or so. This is a Model 50, and this is the older American logo, and this is the April 1994 is what that code means. And what I noticed is that this one had a rivet on the inside of it. Now, I've since taken care of it and replaced the core. But starting in 94, we had riveted cores. This is another Model 50, and this is a little bit newer. This is April, or sorry, March 1999. This one's lived outside it also had a riveted core non-removable I couldn't re simply remove that screw and I thought well it's probably just the old ones and then I had this one and I thought again it was an oddity this is an almost new this is a beautiful lock perfect condition and this was made in December of 11 it had a riveted core as well which I replaced didn't give it much mind I figured these are just kind of oddities until I bought this batch and I got 58 of these things in one batch this is not all of them that you see here this is a little bit different. This is an aluminum body lock, and this is what's known as a Series 10. Uh, I think It looks like some of the double-digit locks, or perhaps maybe the lower quality, or, or maybe the uh, economy line. That's it, the economy line of locks. This one was made, and let's see, May of 11, so pretty new manufacturer. And this one, all of these, in fact, if you, I'll try to shine a light down here to show you, they all have this rivet in here, which means if you need to make a key, you're kind of screwed. You can't do it. Uh, and I do have no key for these locks. I got them all with no locks. I was able to pick all of them, and the idea would be that I would remove all the cores and uh, rekey them in some way. I can't do that, but I've discovered a way to do it. I did it on these three locks, so let me show you how to do it to these. If you come across one of these riveted locks, all is not lost. They have a regular six-pin American core. They're all only pinned up with five, so maybe you want to make a new key. Maybe you want to repin it, and you've given up hope because this thing is permanently sealed. Not really. There's a way to get in here, and let's experiment with that. All right, so how do we get these things open? Well, you can see a rivet right here holding the safety plate on the end. And that rivet, here's one I've already drilled out. And if you take the measurements off this rivet, you'll discover that the shaft of this rivet is about four millimeter. And then if you look at the screw that we're gonna be replacing it with, this is a standard American screw. This one, the head on this is 5.5 millimeter. So we need something between four millimeter and 5.5. So what I've come up with is, on 11 64th drill it's just about 4.5 millimeter. The idea is that we can go in through the top of this and we can drill straight in and we can drill off the flared part of this rivet. Once that flared part has been drilled off as you see here then the rivet we can either tap it out with a, a, a chisel or maybe it'll even fall out like this one did and then we're, then we're in. So let's go do that real quick with a uh, 4.5 millimeter drill bit. All right, guys, nothing high-tech about this. Just a normal hand drill, chuck up our 4.5 millimeter drill bit. And the nice thing is we don't even have to center punch that rivet. It's already got a hole down the center of it where they flared it. So just place your drill bit in that. And then when you start drilling, uh, just gentle pressure. And at some point, you're going to feel some resistance, It'll, like a release of resistance. And that's a good sign. You've drilled through the steel rivet, and you've uh, reached the aluminum part of the lock. So let's drill it. A slight pressure. All right, when you heard it give way, that tells me that we've reached it. So now all we need to do is just take a little, got a little baby hammer here, take our, our center punch, put it right down on top of the rivet and just give it a little tap. And it should pop. In fact, I think it already has popped out. Let me clamp that just a little better. 
There we go. Now let's see if we can remove it. So now you see our rivet has popped out. All we do is pull that dude out of there. There's our drilled out rivet. We won't be needing that. And then all of our guts fall out. Really easy to do. Now we have access. Well now we need to fix it. You know Bill's real good at breaking stuff. Maybe I'm not so good at putting it back together. So let's see how we're going to do that. All right, we're going to recycle most of this lock. We're going to use the original lock. We're going to use the bottom plate. And we're going to use the original core. We can either impression a key or make a key for it now that we've got it out and got it picked. Or we can repin it uh, to a new key. And that's what I've done here. I've decided to upgrade this to six pins. Works perfectly. But we're going to need some new parts to hold everything together. And the first thing you want to get, this these locks come with no... Uh, bypass wafers or anti-bypass wafers and that's what these are. These are the discs that you'll need. These cost about two cents each. You want to put two of them or even three of them on there. The other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need the security nut to hold everything together and then the screw. All this stuff together if you buy it from a locksmith supply is about 20 cents but you have to buy it in bulk. So my recommend if you're not going to do a bunch of these like I am just go to a locksmith and he'll probably charge you probably a dollar for all this junk. Anyway, very easy. You guys have seen this before. Just put, put your wafers on there. Very carefully slide it up into the lock. This is the hardest part of doing this is getting everything to line up. And this also explains why many of these locks don't have security wafers because it, it's a pain in the butt. Once you get your lock in there, push them all the way to the bottom. Slide your end plate in there and drop your security way for your uh, nut in. Now at this point I like to test the lock just to make sure it's going to work because if I screw up then I still get have a way to get him apart. Okay he does work. Once I know he works then just drop your little screw in there tighten it up and for 20 cents guys you now have turned a pretty crappy lock into a replaceable core six pin all security pins and non-bypassable American lock. It's still an aluminum body so I wouldn't be locking up anything super valuable with it but it's a much better lock than what it was and pretty soon I'm gonna have about 58 of them. Anyway guys thanks for your time stay safe and stay legal.